going was the easy part of the journey. Of course there were the thorns and the heat, but at least the container was light. Walking back was the hardest part. School was a privilege for Selma. Not many boys got the opportunity to learn instead of fetching water or helping their father in the field. And the girls? <laughs> Forget it. But Salva was lucky. His father was well off, so Salva went to school and learned to read and write in Arabic. Some people in his community weren't too fond of the language. The rebels. They'd been fighting against the Muslim government of Sudan for years now. War was dangerous, but so far it stayed away from Salva's village. Until that morning. Run to the bush! Salva ran into the bush and didn't stop until he reached a group of friendly faces, all running in the same direction as him. Of course, the group couldn't provide much safety. The men had to go fight with the rebels. Salva's father had always told him to behave like a man, but he was just too young. So he stayed with the women and set up camp in an abandoned barn. It was a difficult night. So many thoughts were flying around his head. Where is my family? How will they find me? Salva was happy to wake up, but when he did, he found he was all alone. I walked to the water twice a day, seven days a week. Being the oldest sister in the family, it was my responsibility to fetch water for the entire family. I made the walk every day for seven months, but when the rainy season ended, my family would leave for the lake. Salva awoke to find himself alone. His only company was an old woman who fed him until a new group of people wandered by. And then, Salva walked again. He walked for days and days, for what felt like forever. He wouldn't dare ask where they were going. He couldn't risk being a nuisance. He walked until it felt like he was a zombie. He walked until he could barely put one foot in front of the other as he grew hungrier and hungrier. One day, someone found honey, and Salva ate until he was full. But usually, his stomach was empty. He met another young Dinka boy named Mario, and soon enough, the pair became the best of friends. They talked, laughed, and walked together. Where are we going? East to Ethiopia, to a refugee camp. I can't go to Ethiopia. How will my family find me? Salva was terrified. He could hardly bear to think of the future, until one day, he heard a familiar voice. The lake was a dangerous place. It lay on the border between the warring Nuer and Dinka tribes. Each thought it was theirs and each was ready to kill to protect their clan. When the rains went away, the lake dried up and dozens of families just like mine left their villages for a spot on its cracked banks. Without the rain, the water seemed to disappear, but if you could just dig deep enough, it would well up in the bottom of the hole. It was dirty and brown, but it was cool, and it was water. Uncle Jawir! Sal. It's so good to see you. It had been years since Salva had seen Uncle, and nearly a year since he'd seen anyone in his family at all. Jewer hadn't seen Salva's parents. He didn't know who made it out of the village. But it was good to have him around. He had a gun, so he quickly became the leader of the group, and they all started treating Salva a lot better. But it wasn't long before tragedy struck, when Mario was killed in the night by a lion. Why did things have to be this way? Now, Uncle was the only one Salva had left in the world. Akir had fallen sick a few days ago. After deliberation, we decided to walk her to a clinic several days away. The doctor thought she had drunk dirty water. That's what caused her sickness. The doctor told us you could clean the water by boiling it for a few minutes. But out by the lake, there just wasn't enough to boil. After months of walking, the group came upon the mighty Nile River. Beyond this river, Salva, is Ethiopia. The refugee camp. Over the next day, Uncle led the group in building dozens of reed canoes. They tested them, and then when the time came, they set off into what seemed to be a never-ending stretch of water. It took two whole days to cross the Nile. Yet the hardest part of the journey lay ahead. The Aqabo Desert. It would take three days to cross, but by the end of the first, Salva felt ready to die. His lips were cracked, his shoes were tattered, and his legs felt like they were cement. All you need to do is reach that next bush, Salva. And as hard as it was, Salva made it. 
Then he made it to the next bush, and the next. Before he knew it, they had reached the end of the desert. But in the distance, a band of men approached. Newer men. Salva felt a biting fear. The men were ferocious. They tied Uncle to a tree and stole the clothes off everyone's back. They took everything. Now they can leave. And then, they killed Uncle. There were new men in the village. They met with my uncle, the leader of the tribe, and a few days later they began drilling in a spot between the two tallest trees. Rumor had it that they were looking for water, but I knew they wouldn't find it there. The water was half a day's walk away. The group arrived in Ethiopia a few days later. Salva kept putting one foot in front of the other, just like Uncle had told him, until a camp of thousands of people spread out before him. Itam. As soon as he reached the camp, the group disintegrated, and Salva had to fend for himself. They were far from war in the camp, but living was still a battle. Salva spent six long years in that camp, before a new rumor began to spread. They're closing the camp! Salva could hardly believe it. Where will we go? Itong had become his home, and he couldn't return to Sudan. They're sending us back to Sudan! The Ethiopian government was in shambles, and they couldn't maintain the camp any longer. One day, the soldiers arrived, and they sent the refugees out of the camp. First they yelled, then they shoved, then they forced the refugees into the Gilo River. On one bank was the violence of Sudan. On the other, the guards began to unload their magazines onto the helpless crowd. In the river, deadly crocodiles were awakening to a bloodbath. Thousands of refugees were lost that day. Salva barely survived the passage, but when he did, he did the only thing he knew. He walked. He put one foot in front of the other, and as Salva walked, Thousands of boys began to accumulate behind him. At this point, Salva was one of the oldest, so he quickly became their leader. He decided that they would walk south to Kenya, where they could find a new refugee. And so, day after day, for an entire year, he put one foot in front of the other until they arrived in Kenya. He spent years at Kukuma camp, then he moved to Ifo, Life was hard in the camps, but he became friends with an aid worker who taught him to read and write in English, and to play volleyball on the side. One day, the aid worker told Salva about a new opportunity, one that made him so excited it was practically all he could think about for months. Each week, a new roster of refugees would be selected to find new homes in America. Day after day, Salva woke up to see if he would be selected until one morning, he awoke to see his name on a list of boys who would be going to New York. The men continued to drill, and as they did, the village men began to build a new structure. I wondered what it could be. A new house? Or a barn? No, it's going to be a school in York. Not just for the boys, but also the girls. It felt like I was living a dream. America was about as different from Africa as could be. Salva had been given a new family in Rochester, New York, and over the next few years, he slowly became a part of their life. After graduating from high school, he earned a degree in business from a local college. He was ready to begin a whole new chapter of his life when the news came through that his father had been located in southern Sudan. Immediately, Salva dropped everything to visit his father in a small Sudanese clinic. The two were overjoyed to be reunited, Yet a shade of sadness lay over them. Salva couldn't return to see the rest of his family. The war was still raging and the water in the village was too unsafe to drink. After four wonderful days, Salva returned to America. But he had a new fire in his belly. As soon as he arrived, he began making plans to create a new business. He met with an expert in fundraising and engineers, and within a year he was standing in front of a school of people, pitching his idea to bring water to southern Sudan. The well was finished. The men put in a filter and a pump, and now cool, clean water was just a single pump of a lever away. 
I would be going to school, and so would every other little girl and boy in the world. Did you know he's Dinka? He was missing his scar, so I never even considered that he could be from a different tribe. Why would he help us? What's your name? I'm Mia. It's nice to meet you, Mia. My name is Salva.